Hey everyone, Nico Carver here. Today I have a mini review that I'm really excited about. This is the Venus Optics Lawa Argus 35mm f0.95 full frame lens for Canon RF mount. And it's available starting today, September 10th, with a retail price of 899 US dollars. And it's also available for Sony and Nikon mirrorless full frame. I'm gonna summarize my impressions up top here and then I'll jump into the details. The reason you get this lens is if you're interested in the f0.95. f0.95 is a very bright aperture and it meant I was able to do some novel things that I've been wanting to try, like shooting live video at 24 frames a second of the Milky Way, which I think is pretty wild. Now, the video angle is one area where I wish I had a Sony camera as Canon's video low light performance isn't the best compared to say something like a7S series with the really big pixels. Unfortunately, I received it right after the peak of the Perseids, as that would have been a great application of shooting video at f0.95. I did get the chance to take a number of photos, and I am really quite impressed with the Milky Way performance, um, with or without a star tracker. Also, for anyone like me who gets limited time at dark sites and wants that insane speed, this is great for like constellation shots and things like that. Now, the downside of very fast focal ratios on lenses is usually there's some trade-offs in terms of you get more extreme vignetting and the star performance, especially away from center, you get a lot of sort of weird aberrations that you can only usually get rid of by really stopping down the lens, but that sort of then defeats the purpose of the insane speed. So I'm gonna talk about all these details, but before I do, let me just say that if you're interested in purchasing this lens, um, I'd encourage you to purchase it from my friend Noah Buchanan at Hunt's Photo and Video, and I'll put his email in the description and right here, and you can just email him uh, to get set up to buy the lens. And this copy is a sample copy that uh, Venus Optics has lent to me. I'll have to sadly send it back soon here. Um, but I really appreciate that they uh, sent me this uh, to check it out uh, for astrophotography. Okay, let's jump into the details now. So as I mentioned, the, the headline feature of this lens is of course that it has a very bright, wide open aperture. F0.95 is more than a full stop brighter than F1.4, meaning to achieve the same brightness across the scene at 1.4, you'd have to expose for twice as long. That's what a stop means. And so it's, it's why we call these lenses faster. Um, and I think the Lawa is a pretty unique lens on the market uh, compared to all the other ultra fast wide lenses we've been seeing um, because most of those have been limited to an APS-C image circle while this one is a full frame 35 millimeter lens. Um, if you do follow lens news like me, you might be wondering why are we seeing so suddenly all of these faster than F1 lenses? And it has to do with the move to mirrorless ca camera bodies um, because the mirrorless cameras have the much shorter flange distance, which means we can get faster lenses. Um, faster lenses did exist back in the day. I mean, even in the 60s, um, uh, Zeiss made the famous Zeiss Planar F0.7 for NASA's Apollo missions uh, with the idea of, of using it to shoot the far side of the moon with a modified Hasselblad camera. Um, and then a little bit later on, uh, one of the 10 copies that Zeiss made for NASA was purchased by director Stanley Kubrick to make his film Barry Lyndon, where he was the first to film scenes completely by candlelight on film stock, which was, I think it was ISO 100. And so anyways, why am I telling you all this? Well, I'm a bit of a camera and camera lens nerd, and I've always been fascinated by that NASA Kubrick connection. And this is why um, when I got to talking to Venus Optics through my friends at Hunt's Photo and Video, um, I was really interested in these ultra fast lenses um, that they're making because I, I always thought it'd be really cool to do astrophotography video of the night sky that sort of better approximated really being there with a wide angle lens and getting the feeling of the actual stars twinkling from the atmosphere and, and everything like that. And I gotta say, this lens really delivered. I, I do wish my camera was a bit less noisy because you can see some noise there, but I definitely see the potential for these clips because um, they're a more immersive way to show off a location and what it really feels like to be, to be there under a, a dark sky especially in this Milky Way one, is that's just how the star clouds and Lagoon Nebula look like, in my opinion, from a sort of dark Bortle 3 zone, and that's where this was shot. In terms of photo performance for astrophotography, I think it will mostly appeal to those that shoot a lot of Milky Way, um, or Aurora, or meteor showers. 
Uh, 35 millimeters is really wide enough on full frame that you can fit in a lot of the sky. Uh, full constellations like Cygnus here or you know the whole Milky Way core area with Sagittarius uh, or from Cassiopeia to the Andromeda Galaxy as I did here. And personally this wide you know I, I look at the whole picture and I don't care so much about zooming in on the corners but if you are a pixel peeper the stars aren't very flattering at f0.95 and they don't really get much better until you're stopping way down to like f4 f5.6 but in terms of just you know taking pictures with it that are that are wide angle uh, and, and not really worrying about mosaics and things like that, I think this lens is going to serve you very well, especially if you're short on time and you really want that photographic speed. Okay, I'm almost uh, out of time, I'm sure, so I'll just wrap up by mentioning a few specs here. It's very well made in my opinion. It seems like a lot of metal. It's 755 grams. It takes uh, 72 millimeter threaded filters. It's all manual, manual focus and manual aperture with no uh, communication to the camera. It does seem to have a permanently attached metal lens hood. Um, there is plenty of room for a lens warmer around the focus ring, which does turn very nicely. And then lastly, the iris can be uh, in declicked or clicked mode, which I think is pretty cool. There's a little switch there. Well, that's it for this 5-Minute Friday. I might return to the lens in a future video when I eventually get to a shootout at this focal length of 35 millimeters, but I'm still working my way up to that. So far, I've done a shootout at fisheye, 14 millimeters, so there are a couple more shootouts to go before I get to 35. This has been Nico Carver, nebulaphotos.com. Clear skies, everyone.